You know, a couple of days ago, I was thrilled reading a story about the Du Bois Latin Charter School in West Philadelphia, where the all-black student body is required to learn the dead language of Latin. The school CEO says that learning the language is like boot camp at Paris Island for Marines. It, it helps to forge identity and esprit de corps. But later that day, I was reminded that the soft bigotry of low expectations is still the rule when it comes to educating black people in this country. Apparently, there's a new push to bring back Ebonics because English grammar is too hard to learn. This an assessment of a researcher at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And this, of course, dovetails a proposal at Clemson that blacks should not be criticized or punished in any way if they show up late for classes because it's, quote, a cultural thing. Here to discuss, Roland Martin. All right, Roland, let me start with this whole idea of um, the, 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 the education of young black people in this country and the expectations, particularly from the school systems, that they can't grapple with, with, with tough, tough uh, uh, curriculums. Okay, well, first, uh, the, the, the researcher, okay, that's not a new push. She talked to three people. That was it. So basically, she talked to you, me, another black person. So, I mean, that research is irrelevant to me. But I do think it's important when we talk about how we educate, we do understand that people do learn differently. So I think about, uh, I think about Harriet Ball, of course, that's the black woman who really served as the basis for the curriculum at KIPP. So here she was, a teacher in Houston, and she was teaching using rhythms and rhymes. The guy who's a co-founder of KIPP goes across the hall and goes, all these kids are learning, and he never thought about it. That is really how this, this charter school KIPP has been created. And so it, like, as a, as a, as a, I got a brother as a teacher and three sisters, and so it's important for us to use different ways to teach kids and not assume there's only one way a child can learn. Well, okay, we don't have to assume there's only one way a child can learn, but are we also assuming that there's ways that child, children can't learn? In other words, can a black kid sit in the classroom with white kids and learn what they're learning uh, by any form that's being taught to them? Or are they somehow yeah. indifferent or, or inferior in some way? No, no, no. It's not a question of inferior, but it's also yes and no. So, for instance, my wife and I raised six of my nieces. One of my nieces is an auditory learner. Another niece, she learns more in terms of being able to read. It's different styles. One of the problems in education is that we don't give teachers leeway in terms of how they're able to reach a child. Now, this whole idea, well, you know, somebody shows up late, that's just nonsense. And so, I don't set those excuses. Is, but I do think it's important for us to step back and say, wait a minute, if this kid can learn a certain way and still get it, and, th and this kid can learn a different way, then we should accept there are multiple ways, not one way. Do you accept, though, that the, the left-leaning education system in our country has, has underestimated black people in, in the way that we have been taught, the, 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 the lesser uh, tests, the, the lower expectations, has had a negative, harsh negative impact on blacks, particularly as they enter adulthood, and not prepared. But first of all, this had nothing to do with left-leaning or right-leaning. Well, it has to do with the education system, no, no, which is primarily yeah, a left-leaning institution actually it's for not. a long time. The reality is our education system from day one has not been educating our children. Uh, if you actually look at the education of blacks in the South by James D. Anderson, 1860 to 1935, you'll realize that African Americans have always been saying the education system has been doing a disservice to our children. So whether you're in a conservative state or a blue state, it's not been doing the job. I believe, again, what is required for us is not to have one way of thinking, there are multiple ways, but we have a one-size-fit-all philosophy in America and that has failed our children, black, Latino, and white. Walter Williams wrote a piece yesterday saying political correctness has held black people back, and if, and if, if political correctness was around in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, we would never have had a civil rights movement to begin with. Actually, with that? first of all, that's nonsense. First of all, what held black folks back was pure bigotry that has been baked into our Constitution, and so this whole issue... Bigot see, where's we, bigotry baked into the Constitution? Are you serious? Yeah. Okay, the, fu the fundamental of our Constitution, when it was even being written, was also based upon whether or not we continue the issue of slavery. You read the book Dark Bargain, you will see how, how, how deep that America was. America has evolved, though. Several Actually, amendments have been, have been added to the Constitution, and, and, and uh, isn't that a crutch? Isn't it? No, it's not a crutch. It's a fact. Beyond that? No, yeah. How can you ask me to move beyond something when even today we're still battling a Brown versus Board of Education decision in 1954? You just had last year a county in Mississippi agree to that particular 
particular desegregation order. We are still battling desegregation I issues do find in it schools. Interesting, though, that you say don't ignore the woman who only spoke to three people, but you'll pick out a tiny county in a no, small no, no, state no, I'm not. to no, I'm extrapolate not. to Actually, represent the entire country Charles, and attack the no, Constitution. No, 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 Charles, if you call Cheryl and Eiffel with the NAACP Legal Defense Education Fund, you call Kristen Clark with the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, you will see numerous cases where they're still battling these issues of education. And as somebody who's a school choice supporter, I see it every single day. The way I, the way I see it, and, and I'm a school choice supporter and I've been on the board of charter schools, uh, is that the Constitution and, and the evolution of America has always been toward that uh, a more perfect nation. Not a perfect nation, but a more perfect nation. And I think we've been able to ride that crest to where we are right now, which is the best place we've ever been in this country. It's not well, perfect, well, it, but, it, but, but you cannot, if anything, you have to blame, you have to uh, uh, applaud the Constitution for allowing this to happen, no, not actually, condemn it. Actually, actually, what I would do is I will applaud folks like Dr. King and others who said, America, we're going to make you live up to the ideals you wrote on sheets of paper. See, we wrote one thing, but lived another. And so thank goodness for civil rights leaders who have been trying to force America to say, live up to what you wrote, right. not how you behave. And those civil rights leaders were educated in a system. They could never become civil rights leaders or even had that kind of mindset if they had gone to kindergarten in 1980 on because their uh, curriculum would have been watered down, their expectations no, would have been watered down. So no, I say thank goodness I, for them, I, too. No, I'm glad I, I, they I went to school before but, but Charles, political correctness but Charles, took over the education system. It's a system. whole bunch of civil rights leaders who have been educating that system, who are still fighting it, and I'm not going to let America off the hook. I don't want a more perfect union. I want black folks to have the exact same fundamental rights as any other white child in America. And I say forget a more perfect union. I want a perfect union. All right, Roland, we'll leave it there. Thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate it.